My name is Melvin Isaac, and I'm a professional artist and a certified uh, community producer at Brick Arts Medium. And I have a, a TV show that comes on every Monday and Wednesday uh, at mm -hmm. 1 a.m., 11 a.m., and again at 4 p.m. And it's on Cable Vision uh, 68 and Verizon 5 old uh, 40. Two, so mm -hmm. that's that's where we at right now. So I, uh, we, uh, our place, Brick Arts Medium is closed down because of the rise, uh, the pandemic, right. and uh, we only would know when it be back open up when the government allows us to open it back up. So mm -hmm. they're very careful about yes. our people back in there with the equipment. And uh, speaking of other right. people, you got a lot of people come through there. So we're doing everything mm -hmm. uh, on uh, Zoom, or we meet meeting yeah. people, or we're taking out cameras, the side road, take out the camera. So one of the things that we was thinking about is uh, uh, asking a question to viewers uh, before the corona hit want to know how did you feel mm -hmm. and, and after it hit. So this way, you know, because other people probably going through the same thing you're going through, but you'll be a spokesman. So that's the question. I won't say none. I just want to ask you the first one, which is uh, uh, how was it with you uh, and your family or you, whoever, before the corona hit? How yeah. It was like with you. Okay. So, um, I mean, you know, one, once the new year started in January, no one had never had an idea that we would bring in the new year uh, facing uh, a pandemic, um, and specifically talking about the COVID-19. No one had no idea that this was going to happen. So uh, before the corona hit, the COVID hit, um, you know, typically, you know, life was just normal, you know, getting up, going to work. Um, and as you may know, I work for the Osborne Association. I'm going to work uh, providing services for the participants that I work to serve. And, um, you know, uh, and then after work, returning home to my family uh, and just, you know, just doing some normal things, um, you know, and, um, and, and pretty much it, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. You know, my life isn't exciting as, you know, I would like it to be, but it's, it's enough for me. Um, yeah, so to answer your question, uh, Melvin, um, life for me was, it was pretty, like, pretty normal, you know, yeah. uh, nothing, nothing out of the ordinary, you know, oftentimes we would, you know, we would, uh, we would plan trips, you know, we would plan trips to go away and things like that, or just take, uh, have an opportunity to take drives out to different places, uh, myself, my daughter's mom and, and myself, uh, and so, you know, we would do a lot of family activities, you know, um, before the COVID hit. And we really had no restrictions, I should say, to put it in a nutshell. We pretty didn't have, we really didn't have no restrictions. Yeah. Yeah. So before we go to the next question, uh, tell the viewers of uh, your name, who you are. Okay. Yeah. All right. So no, my name no. is Joseph Ross. Uh, right. And... Yeah, uh, my name is Joseph Ross. Uh, I'm currently employed for the Osmond Association, a nonprofit agency, and I've been there six years. Uh, and you know, I enjoy what I do. Uh, you know, it helps helps to pay the bills. Uh, and uh, yeah, yeah, okay. that's pretty much it. Mm -hmm. So the second question is, uh, how was life after the Corona came into uh, this world? How was life to you? From that point on. Okay, so when the pandemic, when the, the virus is actually something that we should all be concerned about, uh, you know, because you hear bits and pieces and then, you know, transitioning from um, living like a pretty much normal, quote unquote, normal life, you know, having the ability to travel and just to move around freely to go out when you want to go out, travel when you go out when you wanted to. And then to have all of that come to a halt, that was the challenge. Um, and not 
you know, it was a challenge for me, but I think it was more of a challenge for my family um, because I think I have it, enough experience to buckle down and, and I'm disciplined enough where I'm able to, if I needed to stay put, I could stay put. If I needed to quarantine, I can quarantine. But I noticed the effect that it had on my family. And so to answer your question, when it, when it hit, life took a complete 360 turn for myself and everyone. Um, and what I mean by that is that our uh, ability to travel uh, was restricted. Our ability to go out just to take a walk to the park was restricted. Um, our ability to go shopping, to pick up those uh, bare necessities, it was restricted. And so it was very challenging um, during that process. It was very challenging, especially uh, in the beginning. It was very challenging, uh, to say the least. And um, to, 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 to kind of like think about how I was feeling, I was, I was, I was, I had mixed emotions, you know, I had mixed emotions, man, about, um, you know, the future, like, you know, you know, and, and I understood, you know, I did a lot of readings, I understood that this virus wasn't going to come and go, as it was, you know, stated a lot, and so um, I thought about the future, I thought about the future of myself, my family, and how we were going to now live uh, with these restrictions in place. You know, uh, just to give you an example, you know, oftentimes I would leave the house. This is during the COVID. I would leave the house and I would just forget my mask, right? I would forget my mask. I would be walking two, three, four, five blocks away, uh, maybe going shopping, grocery shopping or something like that. And, um, and I would see other people just looking at me and I didn't even know, I didn't know what they were looking at. They would just stare at me, look at me. And then when it dawned on me, I didn't have my mask on. Um, it was that was the reason why they were looking at me like saying, yeah, where's this guy mad? And so I remember one time I did that. I did it quite quite a few times. Uh, and so I remember the time that I did it that that particular time, um, uh, I had either the option of walking all the way back home to get my mask or to find a mask along the way. And of course, I, I found the mask along the way because wherever I was going, you could not enter without a mask. So that, you know, wearing a mask in, is, is a part of the norm now. And so, you know, uh, for me, it's easy for me, like to place a mask in some of the, 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 the regular clothing that I wear, like the jackets or something, I make sure I have a mask in there because I, oftentimes I get up and I leave out of habit and I forget my mask, right? So some, those are some of the things that I experienced while the COVID, um, is is upon us right the other thing that i noticed was that while you're practicing social distancing other people might not and the frustration the frustration that brings up that brought up that, that it, it, it became upon me upon me was frustrating um how is it that i'm I, I, i'm trying to practice social distance and other people aren't and to give you another example is that when you go shopping people don't want to stay six feet away from you you know, um, you could be standing in line to go into Target or go into one of these 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 shopping areas to buy food or something like that, and people will stand directly behind you. And so, you know, you don't want to create a scene. You don't want to, you know, be disrespectful. So what I've learned to do, if I had a shopping cart, I would put the shopping cart behind me to make sure that I have distance um, between myself because I'm always going to have six feet in front of someone else. But it's behind me that um, I've learned to put something, a barrier behind me to give other people um, room between myself and them. And so th that's the other frustration. You know, other people don't want to practice social distancing. They don't take this virus as serious as I have. Um, and, um, you know, so, so those are some of the, 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 the frustration um, living while 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 um, dealing with the COVID. The other thing, of course, is is having restriction on your your ability to travel. You know, normally, you know, we would take a trip and leave the country. That hasn't. That's not going to happen. You know, there are things in place. You know, where the, where the airports are. You know, trying to practice social distance. You know, we're we're not going to take that that chance. We're not going to travel outside of New York. Um, 
for pleasure, not while um, this this virus is still upon us. Um, uh, a third, and I think most important for me, challenge that I had while the COVID is in was my daughter, right? My six-year-old daughter, she'd be seven uh, on Wednesday, this Wednesday, but uh, tomorrow. And so, but the challenges that she faced and all other children, the challenges that they faced, I think they kind of got lost in the mix of everything. No one is really thinking about their psyche, you know, the things that they, they are experiencing. You have someone, a six-year-old child whose socialization is with their peers in school. And, you know, she's unable to do that now. She's, she's um, doing school remotely. And so that, that posed a challenge. That posed a challenge on her socially and academically. Academically, she uh, is faced with learning new technology, right? She has one laptop on one side, another laptop on the other side, and has a desktop in front of her. And she had to learn how to navigate all three of those systems. Mind you, she's six years old, right? And then to, to, to have the challenge of um, absorbing the knowledge and the education that she receives from the teacher remotely uh, is also challenging for her. And you know, I can see it's challenging for the, the teacher as well. I can see there. this is all new to everyone, of course. And I think about those kids who don't have parents, who don't have parents that are home. I'm lucky enough, uh, my daughter's mother's lucky enough, we're able to work from home remotely, right? And we're able to be there for her. But I think about all those other kids who parents had to go out and who don't have the support uh, of someone uh, assisting them with their, their work because going to school remotely isn't isn't as easy as people would think the children do need someone there to direct them to guide them um, with their work and with um, having the ability to to um, to use the electronics as well so that's that's challenging my daughter's in the school right now she's upstairs in the house in school doing remotely and oftentimes I can see the frustration in her man I can see it she sits there from uh, eight eight thirty to three three p.m. Mm. and she's in school for that that period of time and I noted that it's frustrating. Oftentimes she said my head is hurting. You know, it's it's like she gets migraines from this this new way of learning. But we would rather that we would rather her have a you know a, a migraine as opposed to being sent to school and, and, and potentially being exposed to the virus. And so those are those are some of the challenges that I face while the COVID uh, is upon us, you know. Among other things, there's so many other things that I could think of, you know. Um, working remotely, working remotely uh, is a challenge as well, uh, and uh, and 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 having to uh, provide services for those who 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 come out of uh, facility, right? And 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 so that that is a challenge. Um, but I, I'm just I'm 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 just so happy, and I, and I think I'm I'm blessed uh, to have the opportunity to work remotely because there's so many other people, man, who don't have that opportunity and don't know where the next uh, the next meal is coming from. They don't know how they're going to pay their rent, uh, and I oftentimes think about that, man. I, you know, uh, I'm not I'm not someone who who has a, a a blessing to work from home and have food on the table. You know, I'm not someone that doesn't think about other people, man. And I think about them all the time. Even if I see it on the news, I see these long lines for food pantries. And I say, oh, my God, this is this should not be happening. It should not be happening in, in this country. You know, people should not want for food ever, you know. Um, and so, um, you know, those are some of the things that I face. You know, there is there has been psychological, emotional and uh, even physical challenges. Uh, and, but you know, we we learn to adapt. We learn to adapt um, and try to take each day as it comes, and uh, you know, and we just we just move on from there. You know, yeah. Yeah. Well said. Well said. Uh, and this is what I think people are going to experience the same thing you experience in different ways. But uh, these are uh, the things that they uh, uh, like to hear. Because, you know, you, you sort of like open up different uh, 
doors or open up different uh, mm-hmm. you know challenges to people that it, it, it needs it needs to hear this conversation you know because some people can't deal with this they, yeah. they, they depressed yeah. uh, stressed out yeah. and just, some of them just yeah. you can look at them they gave up yeah. gave mm-hmm. up you know they don't come yeah. out uh, yeah. They close all the windows, have curtains yeah. around. Mm-hmm. They don't speak to yeah. you. They, yeah. you know, get the gloves and the masks on. They don't wear mm-hmm. them. All yeah. that. And yeah. uh, you know, when you look at them, you know that them gay. You can see it in their eye. You know, like they feel yeah, this is it for me. Because yeah, you, you know, know I, 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 yeah, I want to add to that, Isaac. Um, yeah. I had a, a close family member that. I was out in their area and I came to visit. I wanted to come visit. And no, we, we did. You know, we called first and say, listen, we we we're near you. And they live they live pretty far from, you know, from where I live at in Queens. Um and we we stopped by, but the response I got was like we like, you know, you got a mask? Like they didn't really they didn't really want to engage. Yeah. And this is a close family member. Right. This is a close family member. And I felt as though I wasn't wanted, mm. you know, and so, you know, we didn't we didn't go in. We didn't go in. We just stood outside in the car and we just they, and, the, and the family member came down, came out and they greeted us and they greeted, you know, we greeted them back. And we just, and we just passed it through and just wanted to say hi because we haven't seen them. You know, it's been like over six months mm-hmm. and you don't. And that's the other thing, the isolation that that that's. Uh, that's triggered by this this uh, this virus. That you know, you, for those who who, who self quarantine, man, they you know they don't get to see a lot of people, right? And so you're working from home remotely. You're in your house. You only see your immediate family, and you don't you don't get to see anyone else. And so uh, when they when New York started gradually opening up again, we still as a family, we still was cautious. We still continued to practice safe health practices. We didn't just you know, go out without wearing masks. And some people did, you know, unfortunately, some people did. They went out and, and uh, you know, didn't wear their masks and, you know, just was hanging out and stuff like that. And so, but I noted that, uh, you know, even family members uh, have distanced themselves from you uh, because of this, because of the phobia, because of the fear, uh, catching this this virus, um, this hysteria has created for everyone. There's a phobia, right? God forbid someone sneezes mm. in your conference, right? It could be a regular sneeze. God forbid someone sneezes. Everybody's gonna be like, oh, whoa, whoa. I'm in a, a little over six months. I rode the train for the first time, and it was it was the newest thing for me, right? I haven't took the bus all rode the subway train in over six months and I had to go out to do something. And I had to, I had to go out and, and take care of this, uh, this uh, situation. And so I had to go out. And so, um, you know, I'm all, I'm very observant. I didn't want to sit down because I noticed when you sat down on the train or on the bus, people just want to sit next to you. They, there's no social distancing, even on the bus lines no more, you know, or the train lines. There's really, people try, you can see people try, but other people disregard that, man. They just take everything so lightly. And I don't fought them. I fought the MTA uh, specifically because they should not allow for a bus, especially a bus, to fill up to its capacity, even more than its capacity before taking off. You know, they should, um, and, and, and as an example, th- there was a, a train line that was out, and of course they, they provide bus services so you can travel to your destination via via bus line. And so the bus is free, and I'm on the bus uh, waiting to head out, and the bus driver just stood there until the bus was filled to its capacity. Mm. And there was like 20, 15 other buses behind us, empty ready for this one to leave before they can come fill up. And I'm like saying, why would you want to wait until it filled up, right? You know, um, and before taking off. But it's those little things that people take for granted, you know? Um, and so those are some of the concerns that I have, man. I have concerns about, you know, 
not about me practicing social distancing, but other people and other uh, companies and things like that. It, it, you know, they, they just seem to be lackadaisy when it comes to that. And I don't think we should let our guards down at this point. I think that we should continue to, um, to live as though this was the first day that we learned about the COVID, you know? I understand that, you know, you know, things had to open up, businesses had opened up, restaurants had to open up a little more, but we still need to be mindful about social distancing, wearing a mask first and foremost. That's the least thing that we can do to counteract uh, contracting the virus, is to wear a mask whenever possible, social distance whenever possible, and to be mindful of those hot spots that are, you know, around the city. Those are the least things that we can do to prevent it. Yeah. Yeah. Another great answer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Very, very good mm -hmm. concept. Now, the last part before we end this is just uh, okay. because mainly it was just about the COVID before and after. Mm -hmm. But as you see, I got two pictures here. And because I uh, observed what was going on throughout the course of COVID, while we was locked down and we was, uh, mm -hmm. you know, inside, couldn't go nowhere. And then all of a sudden, mm -hmm. it was the George Floyd. All of a sudden, this happened. And it flared mm -hmm. up mm -hmm. the Black Lives Matter movement that a lot of young people, mm -hmm. old, young, middle, white, mm -hmm. black, Chinese, everybody came out while the COVID was still in process, but they came out to protest and march throughout the world. So yeah. what do you think about that? Well, I was, that was a devastating time for me, right? Um, when the George Floyd situation um, took place and to watch someone's last breath just hit the body in front of the world that is the worst thing anyone could see right um and i wanted to do something man i was so angry so angry i wanted to do something and i saw the people protesting and i wanted to go out and protest i wanted so badly to go out and protest but i thought about you know me having to return home mm -hmm. right me to me having to return home to my family to my daughter and um potentially you know being exposed to any to you know to to, to the virus while out protesting right so i didn't go and that was frustrating for me isaac because i wanted to do my part man mm -hmm. i wanted to be out there protesting right uh, because that was an injustice, man, um, that we saw across the world, you know, um, and it was frustrating for me, man. I wanted so deeply to go out and protest, man, and just be a part of that that movement. Uh, but I didn't, you know. I didn't go because, you know, I thought about potentially, you know, being exposed to it, you know, being out there and then having to come home. Had I been a single person and, you know, on my own, I definitely would have went out. I definitely would have went out and uh, participated in the protests, man, and, you know, let the people hear our voices. I definitely would have been a part of it. But, you know, I had to think about, you know, my family. Uh, and, and that's why I didn't go. So when you ask the question, how did it make me feel? It, it was frustrating, man. No one should ever be, uh, have to, have to be treated that way no one by anyone you know and you know and this is something that's been going on for years and decades and you know in our country man and i'm just you know at what point is it going to be enough to say that there is this issue at what point right is it going to be enough and hopefully man this is this is the straw that that broke the camel's back I pray that, you know, even after, you know, George Floyd, there's been other instances and stuff like that. It seems to be that people don't want it to be right. People don't want this country to be right. Uh, and um, and would rather have this discourse, you know, uh, 
And it's just unbelievable, man, that we have to live in a country 2020 um, where uh, black lives uh, matter, don't matter to people. It don't matter to people, man. It's just unfortunate, man, that we have to live in a country like this where, you know, we're treated, you know, uh, as if we're, we're back in Jim Crow days or things like that, man. It's just, it's just un unfortunate, man. Uh, my daughter is clear about what took place. She, you know, she watches the news. We talk about it all the time. We watch this current, we watch current events. She understands about the COVID. She understands a lot about politics and things like that. And um, I just, I can only wish that when she become our age, that you know, this world is a better place to live in. Uh, you know, without all the the stuff that's going on now nowadays, I, I can only wish for that. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, uh, I definitely agree with you on that. Uh, being that I'm, I'm single, so I'm not married. Mm -hmm. So when that happened, my film was very frustrated, uh, mm -hmm. disappointed what was going on. So I took a role and went out. Uh, yeah. Being I'm an artist, so uh, right. I helped in the uh, mm -hmm. painting the uh, Restoration Plaza on Fulton Street with yeah. the Black Lives yeah. Matter. So, they had mm -hmm. they had the cameras there, the TV, and I'm there. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I took part of that that movement there, mm -hmm. and I uh, watched them go across the bridge. I had pictures, so I was part of that you know that movement with mm -hmm. my mask on, and uh, mm -hmm. it wasn't that easy to stay six feet away because you was doing all kind of stuff. But I had to yeah. you know I had yeah. to be part of that, mm -hmm. and I felt good after that you know that. Right. Uh, Right. And the young people that I've seen that was there, all nationality, they were serious. They was, they was, yeah. there was no doubt in my mind that they said, we're going to change this. We with you. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah. so I made a video of it where I encouraged a lot of people that you did a good movement, but now you got to vote. And now that yeah. I'm looking around to the voting polls, is is a huge amount of people voting. Yeah. And that mm -hmm. is making a difference. All, all yeah. early voting, then I took part of mm -hmm. joining up with the, uh, uh, become a poll worker. So I went and took the test, yeah. passed the test, so now they gave me a position to help with the uh, voting. So I'll be working on uh, November the 3rd. Mm -hmm. So it is part of me, you know, being part of this situation that's going on now. Mm -hmm. But I think we're going to see a great change. The same thing I see when Obama was elected, the huge amount of people that came, it's the same thing I'm looking at now. The exact same thing. Yeah. That people are frustrated. They want this change and yeah. they're not trying to hear it this time. No. So they, yeah, they, they, I, I agree with you 100 percent I think I, I agree with you 100 percent I'm gonna go vote on Thursday. I'm going to vote on Thursday. I found my voting uh place facility is in brooklyn the masonic temple um and so i'll be there thursday uh it opens up at 12 i'll be there early man just so i can you know get there and get it done and um and do my part um voting is so crucial because our vote uh will help determine the directions that this country goes in and dealing with the COVID as well oh, yeah. right yeah oh, vote Will, will determine how this country moves forward and dealing with that dealing with the all the all the issues that 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 came upon us on 2020 dealing with george floyd and and, and brianna taylor and, and everyone else that's 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 faced some challenge uh, our vote will help uh to make a difference mm -hmm. uh and I, i'm gonna and i'm gonna i'm gonna exercise that right i'm gonna exercise exercise that right on thursday and i just hope that everyone everyone that has the ability to vote man to go out and vote because it's crucial it's very crucial um we don't need a f another four more years of what we have uh in place now um because it's not going to do us any good you know you know having someone throw us a couple of trinkets you know and you know and 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 just to keep us happy but behind the scenes trust me there are a lot of things that's 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 in in motion that they are putting in place yep. and they need another four more years to do that yep. 
yeah. you know, four yeah. years is not enough to do actually what their plan is. Mm-hmm. So they need that extra four years. So we need to get out and vote, man. Everybody, young, um, young brothers, man, your vote count, young brothers and sisters, your vote count, older people, your vote count. We need to go out and, and make this change happen. Um, and I, I can't stress it enough. You know, uh, my daughter wants to come out and vote. She said, I want to go vote. We said, you're not old enough. And she understands. She understands the importance of voting yeah. um, to get the, the, the current regime out. She understands. She understands who's in there, who's who potentially running the country. She knows this person's name and everything. Yeah. And uh, she wants to go and vote. That's how serious it is. Yeah. Oh, it's going to be a change. I, I can see it now. It just reminds me of mm-hmm. the pop time. With uh, yeah. at that particular time, you know, how, yeah, uh, yeah. Nelson Mandela mm-hmm. got out and uh, mm-hmm. he became president, how they overdo the government. Yeah, so that's what I'm looking at. You know, the, the people, right. when the people when the people rise up, it's over. That's right. When the people that's rise right. up, it's nothing you can you you can that's try right. to hold on to whatever you got, but the people said right. that's it. We're not trying to hear none that's of this it. anymore. That's it. And that's, that's what it. I'm looking at right yeah. now. So. Yeah, I think it's going to be a great turnout. I, I, so far, I'm watching the news, and so far, mm-hmm. Joe Biden is way ahead. Uh, he's been ahead anyway, yeah. but then it got further. And uh, you mm-hmm. know, it's just going to be a sweep, you know. And that's the end of that. Yeah. Of course, they got game, you know, whatever. But uh, yeah, yeah. You know, that's yeah. the deal right now. So far, it looks pretty mm-hmm. good. So yeah, mm-hmm. I appreciate the interview. Very great. Uh, ex- Thank you. I did. You know, and I, 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 I appreciate uh, sharing my uh, my feelings, you know, because that's therapeutic. Uh, yes, I guess when yes, you're yes, able to is. talk yes, about yes. what you're feeling and stuff like that, that's that becomes therapeutic. Uh, um, you know, oftentimes when you're around your immediate family, you know, we talk about things, but you don't really talk about, no. you know, really how you're feeling, you know. Yeah. And so, um, you know, this is just an opportunity for me to share some of the, some of my thoughts and feelings. There's a lot more. <laughs> that I internally, yeah, that I internally, I internally uh, experience daily and the challenges yeah. and things like that, man. But you know, I'm, I'm hope I, I said enough to give a paint a picture oh, yeah, of what, yeah, yeah. what, what normal looked like, and then, uh, what happens when your freedom is taken away from you, and then how do you feel about going forward, uh, uh for the future. You know, and that's another topic, you know, talking about the future, you know, with, with um, you know, uh, the country having a, a, a vaccine in place and having people having that access to, to get the vaccine and, you know, and then just to, just to have that opportunity, man, um, you know, to, to, to bring yourself back to some normality, man. And so uh, whatever that might be for, for everyone. So, yeah, I, I thank you for this opportunity. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's a new reality. Yeah. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna probably get back with that to make another film and uh, yeah, after mm-hmm. after the election, after the stain is over, and um, yeah, you know, and have the same situation now, now, you know, yeah, because the future's not here yet, so it's just the, it's right now, right. the present is right here, it's right. the past and the present now. Mm-hmm. But I will do another one. And I got other people that mm-hmm. probably uh, for t- uh, tomorrow that wants to do the uh, mm-hmm. same situation. So I'm going to get back with them. Okay. But I'm also going to get back with okay. my buddies, you know, uh, classmates. Yeah. And yeah. I'm going to put the same yeah. to them. I just want to review this and see how this went. And then when I come back, okay. I want to put it on air and you will see it as well. Yeah. All right. Okay. All, All right, right, Isaac. Appreciate Thank you very much, brother. No problem. Okay, you be safe out there, man. And you too. Take care. All right, okay. All right.